Okay. We on our on our last part here. We're going to describe the 108 square foot cabin design. Give more of a close up here so you can get a visual. So, this one here we have uh, as far as being transportable from outside tip to outside tip, you have 12 foot, and uh, I'm not sure what the old height is, or you can probably make a low bed trailer. Uh, overall, probably 13 and a half feet. Again, when you make your your trailer and making this size, you really have to know your your height. You want to make sure that you can get through your. You're not going to be knocking the top off and going through a underpass or whatever. But I think you know even if you if you made it about 14 feet in mine. From here to the ground to the wheels, that it's going to work. And uh, oh yeah, that's what I was going to see on on the first one. You can design it with your outriggers built in here. So when when you park, you can actually pull out your outriggers, crank them down, pull them out, crank them down. Something like this, you might want at least six, and uh, you can have it. Uh, so. Uh, right on your the outside of your your trailer part, you, you could actually have a deck that folds right down onto your outrigger, so you could actually have a place to, to walk to have access to your where you're off the ground. Okay, but just not another thought. On your bench benches on these, they would be uh, 38 inches, so. You know, if your smaller shops were inadequate for a micro shop, you can actually upgrade it from a 30 to a 38 inch bench and it'll give you a six feet high. And uh, but this makes it, and like most of your trailers that you buy, even the, the new trailers that you buy for the back of your, for your truck and all that, you know, you're spending $25,000, dollars $30,000 on something that's uh, not even eight feet wide. And uh, these here, you automatically got uh, nine feet finished on the inside between your walls. So you got something, you got usable space here that's wider than the best camper models that you can buy. I'm not talking about polos. So, you know, your your bench area is big enough for, for a bed. We could have beds that could, you know, you could use one part as a bed. You could have a bed here. You might even be able to make a, a third bed up here, maybe for the kids. So if you had a uh, one that was 16 feet long, that would give you enough room for uh, three, 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 12 people. So just a thought there. Or you can make it where the end wall you know, becomes a master bedroom. <clears throat> then you would have room for your kids and still room for cooking and, and maybe a little bathroom arrangement. As far as weight wise, I haven't really figured that out. Uh, wouldn't be all that hard to figure out how much wood that's going to take to make this, what it's going to be, what's going to weigh. And uh, so you could calculate your, your 2 by 6 arrangements, your, your purlings, or your plywood that you can use for skinning your joints. And uh, the plywood that's going to go on the outside, so you can pretty well calculate the weight uh, compared to uh, you know a conventional camper that you see back in the 70s and 80s. This is going to be quite a bit heavier. So you might have to go to a triple axle design on something like this, or uh, maybe a tandem or triple axle where you could actually have a hitch in the front. Uh, you well, there's some fabricators out there. I'm sure that you could come up with something. And uh, well, as I was saying, your, your smaller ones are mainly for storage. Your, your, your in-between size, 75 square foot models are mainly for shops, micro shop facilities. 
and your larger ones could be could be more suitable for living because you could have uh, for the long term you could have a family in there uh, you'd have your privacy for enjoying the time that the remnant's going to be in the place as a refuge you know you could your handle handle any kind of elements or whatever for for the long term and uh, with your your shops and and all your other arrangements, you, you would actually have a, a portable system that you could make and, and have in place. And as far as, uh, say, if you want to bring this together, this this uh, camper arrangement, if you want to make like a joint bunch of them together into a complex, you could actually uh, have, if you put these in for the end and, and allow a walkway in between, you could actually have walkways that would come down where they could connect. You could have actually have a oh, how could I say it? You have one here and one here with a walkway in the center. So you, and that could be like an open arrangement with maybe with a, a covered opening where you could take the next step where you could have a uh, like a trailer assembly that could park and you can actually have these so they would actually They'll plug into the side. So this is your your trailer assembly. This could be 12 by uh, 24. And you can take these. You can turn them, and so you could actually have your doorways that would uh, connect in place to the trailer system. So this would be your your, your dining hall and all that. This would turn turn to be your sleeping area. At least you would have your privacy. Yeah, so you wouldn't be looking into, into any, anyone else's bedroom because you are you don't have any windows on the side. You might have windows on the end, you know, but you primarily would have you know skylights on, on the top. So I was going to give everybody the, their privacy. Now, I've lived in camps before. I've lived in, in refuge places before, like with the Sam Fife community and all that. And everybody has their own homes. And when the time, time coming, not everyone's going to have their own homes. Because we're coming into a time where we may have to leave uh, very quickly, and uh, if you got time, you could you know set up a permanent shelter. I think we're going to, if all this comes down, we're going to be, and the Lord's going to say, well, go to a certain point, and just like the stand, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that's going to come together for uh, like an initial gathering, and from there you can you can make arrangements. And, Seek the Lord is where to go for the uh, for the duration of the tribulation time. And uh, you know, since ever coming to the Lord, you know, I've always knew that I'd be going through uh, tribulation. And uh, it's not whether we do or not, but it's whether we're ready in our heart. Because if we're not ready in our heart, it's not going to matter anyway. And uh, it's imperative that we learn to uh, dwell in the sacred place of the Most High in Psalms 91. But while we still got the time, and you you out there that maybe you don't believe in the free trip, you might be Baptist or Methodist or whatever, <clears throat> what, you know, if you're going to go, you know, please set aside all your finances, your money, set it up for the kingdom, give it over to the Lord, because I'm sure that he has people I could use your resources since you're not going to be here to help those that are going to be here to survive. So just a thought. You know, empty your bank accounts, give your money away, let God prosper you. Because the, because the economy that we're coming into in the kingdom, the, uh, the economy of, of heaven is not, not getting, it's not taking, it's giving. And if you want to be blessed, Give away what you have. Give to the kingdom. Give to God's people. You know, <clears throat> those of you that are not going to be here, well, spend your millions and uh, you use the time, or maybe you have have the shops and all that where you could actually do this. Do something for the kingdom. But just don't sit on your money, because your money is going to dwindle away, and Uncle Sam's going to take it from you just a matter of time, especially when the Economic, we're right, we're right before an economic reset now, where we're going to see a, a third loss in our value of our money. 
Okay, I'm just going to set this back down. This ends this portion on the uh, making these uh, designs for uh, creating your infrastructure for the places of light. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do a third series on the cities of light. It's going to have to do with the seven visions uh, that the Lord gave me back in February of 1988 of the total destruction of the West Coast. This is Joshua Taylor coming to you from here on the east coast of Canada.